Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm really excited because we have David West, and he is called, he's known as Flat Earth Dave, and he is here today to prove that the world is flat. He's also going to talk about how it relates to the mental health issues and how it could actually help you with addiction if you change your mind and reverse yourself to understand that the world is actually flat. It's not round, guys, and he's here to prove it. So Dave, I'm so excited to have you on the show today. It's, uh, you know, I was reading about your stuff. I'm like, I got to get this guy on the show. I want him to prove to me that the world is flat because I grew up and I, since, since I was a little kid and, you know, we were taught in school, you know, we were taught all the time that the world is round. I look up in the sky, the world looks round, the moon looks round, everything looks round to me. And, you know, I just want to learn before we go into the flat earth thing, how the hell did you get into this concept where you, you know, you came to to grasp that the world is flat? Because I'm sure just like me, you were taught in school, the world is round, everything is, you know, you know, we were taught our science and all that other good stuff. You know, what made you come to this conclusion? Before we lose all your listeners, because they're like, wait, wait, Stacey's lost her mind. She has a flat earther on. I offer three Bitcoins for one globe proof. OK, and so if you think Stacey's crazy, hit me up. Three bitcoins. That's a, that's two hundred thousand dollars about, and uh, for one globe proof. Here's the thing: the shape of the Earth doesn't matter. It doesn't. It's your position in it and what why they're hiding it and the why the lie is the best question. So we'll get to that. How did I get into this? Um, I always question things, and, and everybody should. I mean, the government govern is to control, and meant is the mind. Um, they uh, teach us a lot of nonsense in our school, and I started questioning the Federal Reserve. I started questioning, you know, where excuse me where does money come from um and then i started looking into all the other deceptions of the world um the big ones you know the false flags the hoaxes and um <coughs> excuse me in the third year people started sending me hey dave have you looked into flat earth and what i did is i just banned them from our social media because they're too stupid and <laughs> Finally, I was forced to look, and I didn't look in as an open skeptic um, looking for truth. I went to just disprove flat Earth, and that's how you become a flat Earther. Now, when I say flat, the Earth is obviously not flat. It's a topographical level, horizontal, horizontal excuse me, I'm choking to death, um, plane. And uh, there's hills and valleys, but the, the science of water, water at rest lies flat. So the Earth is 70% water. There is no measurable curvature. That's a problem. So people immediately revert to, well, the Earth is so big, it's like a, it's like a microbe on a basketball. It would look flat. <clears throat> That's what they've programmed everybody to think. But the curvature, without getting into all the specifics, we only have a limited amount of time. According to the globe math, six um, a six-foot-tall person should only be able to see the surface of the water for three miles because there's six feet of curvature at three miles. At 10 miles, there's 66 feet of curvature. So wow. I went and got a, a super zoom uh, lens, a camera, and I went down to the beach, set my camera up maybe two feet off the ground, which means that the, her, the horizon, the horizontal eye zone or eye zone <clears throat> should be under three miles away. But I could see a buoy that's only 10 feet tall that's over 10 miles away. It should be behind 60 feet of curvature, right? When I say behind curvature, you can't yeah. see my mouth because it's behind the curvature, physical yeah, yeah. curvature. Right. There is no physical curvature. So when you say, um, you know, we were all taught the earth was a globe. It's funny. They taught us that before we can talk. Sesame Street had, has, has it. Um, your parents probably had a mobile over your crib with planets, right? You say you look up and the moon is spherical, right? Okay. Yeah. Look up at your lights and your ceiling and then tell me about the shape of your floor, right? Does that make any sense? The lights in the sky, which we call um, sky phenomena, because we don't know how far they are, how big they are, what they are, um, do not represent the ground that you're standing on. They want you to believe that the moon is a place that you can go, that men walked on the moon. It's nonsense. Go outside when there's a big moon in the sky and hopefully there's some clouds and you'll see that the light coming off the moon is lighting up the clouds that are right next to it, but it's not lighting up the clouds off to the side, right? If it was a light 238,000 miles away, it would light up all the clouds at the same time. 
but it's only lighting up the ones close to it. And then the the shape of the moon, um, I think the moon is a sphere, but that has nothing to do with the with the shape of the Earth, right? And you also look at the the moon in the sky is a light, right? Mm -hmm. When you have a single source light, the sun, and a dark yeah. area, the, the the space, you got the moon, it would have a hot spot and then the light would go off. But the moon, when it's a full moon, it's lit equally edge to edge, right? And then if you go biblical, the, you know, God says he created the sun and the moon to rule the day and rule the night. And they're both lights, the lights in the sky, right? You can't have sun reflecting off of a dusty, dirty ball and coming back to earth so bright that it casts your shadow on the ground that you could read a book by it in the middle of the wilderness, right? How is that possible? And there's a thing called the inverse square law of light without getting technical. Every time you get half the distance to a light, it should be four times brighter. So if we use the inverse square law at a hundred miles away from the moon, it should be 60,000 times brighter than we see it from earth. Really? Okay? Yeah, it should be six. You can't fathom what that's brighter than the sun, multiple times brighter than the sun. So you can't fathom how bright that is. But that's what science says. Flat earthers, you know, oh, you're pseudoscience. No, astronomy is pseudoscience. Astrology is actually the real science. I used to laugh at astrology. Right. Yeah. And uh, and when you get deep into it, uh, one other thing I, I'd like I, I'd like to say early here is um, yeah. is. Don't believe anything I say. I'm just trying to point towards a whole bunch of doors that have been hidden from you. And I want you to go, um, I want you to go look at those doors and make up your own mind. Don't believe, uh, don't believe anything I say and, uh, and go verify. And if you Google flat earth, you're going to get fed a whole bunch of propaganda. It's like Googling, I don't know, the, I, I don't want to get, open up any other conspiracy doors, but if you try to Google something that they're hiding from you, they're going to feed you the non the other the other side of it, right? This is what I wanted to show you. I got three moons here. Is that one spherical? Well, it's a half a sphere, so it's really hard to tell. Is that one spherical? Looks spherical, right? Looks what spherical. if that was the moon? Well, it actually it's lit up like it's spherical, unlike our moon, which is not lit up, but it's actually flat, right? This one, that one could be spherical, right? but it's actually not, it's concave, it's an actual bowl, right? So looking at something in the sky and trying to tell, you know, figure out what shape it is, um, is not something that you can do. This is 120,000 feet above the earth. The earth is spinning at a thousand miles an hour below us. So a balloon is detached from the earth. The earth is spinning to the east at a thousand miles an hour. That's how fast it's spinning at the equator. So this balloon, after being up there for three and a half hours, should land 3,000 miles to the west, right? Because the Earth should have spun out from underneath it. It actually landed 100 miles to the east. So it went up. Somehow it sped up because when it's up in the air, it has to go actually faster to keep up with the Earth. It outran the Earth and landed in front of it. Or maybe the Earth is just flat. The sun is local as it's lighting up a hot spot right here, right? <laughs> but they want you to believe they want you to believe when you when you look up in the sky, uh, when you hear about flat Earth, that this is flat Earth. They want you to believe this is flat Earth. Nobody thinks this is flat Earth. So I know we have limited time. I can talk like this forever. I want to get into um, the theme of your podcast a little more, which is the mental health side. Right. right. So um, flatearthdave.com. You can find tons of my interviews there. You can find my app there. Um, there's a thing called the Crash Course. Scroll down. And uh, there's videos that are being hidden from you. Great documentaries. Uh, I, I just recommend that you just start watching those. But how does this relate to mental health, right? So what what is, what is your, your, do you believe that we are eternal? Do you believe that, you know, we're eternal souls having experience here? What What's your general idea of what this place is? I believe we are eternal souls and, and we have, we, we go on and this is basically like a boot camp, getting us ready for whatever is next. I life. love it. I love it. Absolutely. I'm, I'm with you hundred percent. So we're having this, this experience here. And so you have your soul, your eternal soul, then you have your conscious mind and your conscious mind helps you navigate through this world. Right? right. So what they try to do, they try to control your mind. They use the news, an acronym for North, East, West, South to, to steer your mind. Okay. Uh -huh. Sounds a little crazy, but when, when you start putting all this stuff together, it makes more and more and more sense. So they steer your mind. And why would they hide the shape of the earth? Well, because 
if you find out that the earth is intelligently designed, which a flat earth has to be, yeah. then you have no other choice but to accept that there's a creator and that could lead you to understanding that you're an eternal soul. It could it leads you to a lot of understandings. If you believe in the heliocentric world, you have two choices. You can believe in an equator that said, okay, once upon a time there was nothing, it exploded, it became everything, and then everything condensed into spheres, and then lightning struck and created an amoeba that turned into a fish that grew legs, climbed out of the water, found another fish that had legs, and it turned into a monkey, and then that monkey turned into a human. That's what they teach us in school. Okay. Yeah. It's a little summarized there. But um that yeah, that is that dilutes creation it dilutes your um your ability to live to your potential when you understand that you are at the center of creation that you have great power your thoughts create your reality so your soul knows the truth of the world and your soul is always trying to talk to you, your inner voice right mm -hmm. it's trying to talk to you but a lot of people have such monkey minds they can never hear their soul they're always listening they're watching netflix they're watching the news right having their mind steered and they, they, they don't hear their soul. Eventually your soul gives up and goes, you know, I, I can't talk to this person. And that's when depression kicks in. Depression leads to everything else, right? We have tons of people in our community, in the flat earth world that um, struggled with addiction, right? Struggled with uh, depression. And after they found out the earth was not a spinning ball floating in space, that they're not insignificant. These are people that are just on my app. This is a fraction of 1% of the flat earthers in the world, right? Here we are in, uh, in America um, and it has freed them. They've literally kicked their addiction um, and found you know, their meaning, their purpose. You know, people say, what's the purpose of life? I'm here, I'm gonna, you know, there's, there's people that believe that they're random specks, uh, that, they, that they, um, they're gonna live their life, they're gonna die and turn into worm food, right? And that's the end of it, right? It's so stupid. I used to believe that, I was stupid, all right? I, you know, I use the word ignorance a lot. It's not an insult. You are ignorant to everything that you don't know, right? right. That's, just, that's just the definition, okay? Pe people are ignorant to um, the reality of the world that they live in. So when you discover, when you connect to your true being, to the, what this place is, you, all of a sudden you, you connect to source information, right? And then it opens up the world. This world is amazing. Um, I'm guessing you haven't heard of, of the old world or Tataria. No, I haven't. Okay, this is fantastic. On my website, this is this. You think flat Earth is an awakening? Wait until you see what's on flat Earth. Okay, right in front of your eyes. You are. I'm going to warn you. After watching this video that I'm going to tell you about, you're never going to be able to go back outside again and not go. Wow, how did I not see that before? It's going to open your eyes. It's a movie. It's just an introduction to the old world, which is called. Um, Old World Order. There's a big banner on my website, flatearthdave.com, and it's right near the top. It says Old World Order. Turn off Netflix. Watch that with your significant other, your kids, whatever. Just It's a great video. It's, I think it's like maybe, I don't know, 70 minutes, 90 minutes. I'm not sure. Um, and your jaw is going to drop, and you're going to be like, wow. There was an advanced human, well, an advanced civilization here just 150, 200 years ago. Yeah. Way more advanced than we are now, worldwide. We mm -hmm. are literally in the middle of the movie Idiocracy right now. We're not at the pinnacle of civilization. We're not the smartest the world has ever been. You know, There was the dark ages for thousands of years, and in the last 150 years, we've created airplanes and computer chips and all that stuff. That's nonsense. It's old world technology. And they're only dribbling it to us. We are, we are literally in a prison planet. So, so the, the idea of the, you know, like what difference does it make? I still have to go to work on Monday. I know that's what many of you were thinking because that's what I was thinking. We were all programmed to say that. Um, and when you, when you finally see it, you, uh, you, <laughs> everything kind of comes together. So the, 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 um, the ball is a prison for your mind. Here, it's a little far right here. So if you live on a ball, mm -hmm. there's limited resources. That's right. it. We're going to be taken out by an asteroid. Nuclear bombs could blow us up. Have you looked into nuclear bombs? <laughs> You're afraid of nuclear war? Nuclear bombs aren't real. Wait a minute. What about Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Dave? We don't have time to get into it, but on my website, there's a big banner. It says nuclear bomb hoax. Okay. 
listen to, don't believe it, listen to it and think about it. And then you will know for a fact that nuclear bombs are not as described. It's just a fear tactic because if you live in fear, false evidence appearing real, F-E-A-R, then every cell in your body is at dis-ease, okay? You, so like if you're if the news is on in the background and I say don't have the news on in the background, it probably gives you cancer. Um, if you hear like, oh my God, you know, Putin and uh, North Korea could start a nuclear war, right? Every cell in your body, even though you're like, okay, I can deal with this, hopefully it doesn't happen. Every cell in your body is like, oh crap. Right. This this isn't good. And it puts you in fear, which lowers your ability to manifest your mind. You manifest everything you have in your life is your fault because of the way that you think everything good or bad. If you focus on bad things, if you focus like, oh, my God, I'm never going to have money. You know, I want a million dollars. Basically, you're sending out information that you're going to live paycheck to paycheck and eventually be homeless. Right. That's the energy you're sending out. Birds of a feather flock together. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, attention flows where energy flows, where attention goes. OK. So these are all things that free your mind. And when you when you free your mind from the heliocentric prison, everything changes, right? I should probably let you talk a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So like, let's say like the ships in the ocean or the uh, tall Chicago buildings, you know, that overlook Lake Michigan disappear from bottom first. And you can yeah. see all the twice and if you watch it lying down and then quickly stand up the simple fact is that the earth were flat but if you yeah. wouldn't be hori uh, horizon and beyond the things that could disappear so from across lake michigan you'd be able to see chicago yeah. and rocky mountains yeah yeah so so um let me just pull this up real quick and uh mm -hmm. so so that's a very good question and yet this is what they don't teach us in school so if i go on my app here and I just type in Chicago. I think there we go. So I'm uh, um, looking across Chicago. I'll just zoom in here. Looking across Lake Michigan, 50 miles. Here is on a clear day, we can see all of Chicago. The top of this building should be something like 100 feet below the curve, but we can see all of it. And they say it's a mirage. It's a mirage. And the, so the newscaster that talked about this, like, oh, it's a mirage and they, how it's going up. So a mirage would change from different angles, right? So we, on a clear day, got a boat and we put a camera on Chicago and went all the way across Lake Michigan and it never changed. So that proves it's not a mirage. And then if you look here, this is a day where, where you can't see Chicago, but mm -hmm. the sun went behind and backlit it and now you can see it. It's just because the air is too thick to let the light that's bouncing off of Chicago um, come, come, come to you. So let me show you. Um, let me show you another one. And there's two types of things. Um, there is there is terrestrial, which is boats and mountains and buildings, and then um, there's there's celestial, which are uh, light phenomena in the sky that disappear, and they disappear for different reasons. So here is a spot in Illusia, France. Let me pull this up. And out here, can't see it, is Canigou Mountain, which is 175 miles away. You can't see it because according to Globe Math, from this viewing spot, the top of Mount Canigou should be over a half a mile below the curve. Remember when I held the, the you know, you can't see my mouth because it's below the curve, right? Yeah. So, but the sun travels between the tropics, which we haven't gotten into, and twice a year it lines up with the viewer. Yeah. And Mount Canigou and twice a year, if you go here, the sun goes beyond Mount Canigou, and you can see the whole mountain. The top of the mountain right here should be over a half a mile below the curve, but it's not. It's right there. And now this is the official globe story. The globe explanation for this is, ready? You're going to like this, right? The sun already set, but it's refracting up magically. And the mountain, which has no light on it, is refracting up and blocking the sun, right? And the reason you can't figure that out is not because you're stupid, it's because it's stupid, right? The entire globe model is the dumbest thing ever. Flat Earth, there's no more about the globe model than people that deny flat Earth. People that deny flat Earth, you ask them, what's the radius of the Earth? What's the circumference of the Earth? How fast is it orbiting the sun? How far is the sun? How did they figure that out? You know, they don't know any of those answers. We know all of those answers. And when you put them all together, you're like, this is stupid. This is just stupid. And uh, this is the lie. You know, Dave, why are you talking about flat earth? There's child trafficking going on, homelessness, wars. Um, 
There's more important things. They're blowing up people, children, right? Why, why are you talking about this? Because this is the foundation of the lies. If you can believe that you're on a spinning ball, flying in an, infinite, an insignificant speck, flying through an infinite universe, then you'll believe anything. You'll believe that if you breathe on grandma, you're going to kill her, okay? You'll believe, you'll believe anything. And that's how they control us because they, they separate us from God. It's literally to hide God. Right now, 10 years ago, I said, there's no God. And if you said this to me, I would have just like, you're a religious freak, okay? But this is actually, they're hiding create the creator. Now, I'm not a fan of any organized religion. I think that the creator is within us, not separated from us. The, if you look at the 1776 Bible, um, there was all sorts of stuff that's been removed because these bishops all decided, hey, we need to separate God from man. That way we can be the middleman. We can be the conduit to God and control the people, right? God is within us. We are all part of God. This, you know, they say the earth is living. I used to kind of laugh at that. I was like, all right, maybe the earth is living. Not only is the earth living, the sky is living. The lights in the sky are living. We are living and we're all part of this incredible electrical system, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So. There you go. And and so just hearing this, imagine if what I'm saying is true. Doesn't that free your soul? Doesn't that doesn't that lift up your life? There's infinite resources. There's infinite free energy, right? They they trapped us yeah. into this fossil fuel dinosaur juice. Are you kidding me? Right? They 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 make us pay for energy. They make us pay for food. Food is free. Go into your garage, find that jar of seeds that your grandmother put there 80 years ago, stick it in the ground. Water, the most precious substance on earth, will fall from the sky and food will come out of the ground. Okay. P people don't know this. Okay. And it'll be amazing. It'll be the best food you ever had. So, this world is not what we've been sold. Right. Now, I get you. I get what you're saying. I agree with some of the stuff you're saying. But let, let's say, you know, I, you know, I still haven't been, I'm not, I don't know about the world being flat, but if the stars at night change as you go north or south, for example, Oregon is upside down if you're in Australia. So, you know, you know, that's yep. one way of looking at, yep. you know, how do you disprove let me, that? Let me explain that. So let's say we're uh, in a room and we put a smiley face on the ceiling and you're standing on one end of the room. We'll call that the north. And you okay. look up at the smiley face and you see it. Now walk to the other side of the room and look at the smiley face. It's now a sad face. It's upside down. You're in the South. Uh -huh. You're in the South, right? So, so how does, uh, how, how come you can't see the North star from the, from Australia? And the answer is because the North star is close and, yeah. and it's just far away. Like if you're standing under a street light, it's directly over your head. If you look at the street light a quarter of a mile down the street, it looks like it's at your eye level but it's yeah. still the same height. And then if you walk down towards that street light a half a mile, and then you know, even farther, you look back, you can't even see the one that you were standing under because it's merged into the horizon. Right. You, it, it's merged into the, the horizon. So um, let me show you, uh, where is it? All right, so this is, this, is, this is on the heliocentric system. We have the North Star, I think this is the one, and it's directly above you. And as you move along to all of these locations, the angle of the star gets lower and lower and lower and lower until it's, you know, this person is seeing it, you know, very close to their horizon, right? Yeah. And so that's what they tell us. But in reality, the earth is small, the earth is flat, the North Star is close, and as you move away, the star gets lower and lower and lower due to perspective, right? Yeah. This is an or orthographic view but as you're moving away, it gets lower and lower and lower, just like these, these lights get lower and lower and lower. Think of each one of them being the North Star. You're farther and farther away from it. It just merges into the horizon. Then why do we have different time zones too? You know, like why, if, the, if the world was flat, you know, and, and, you know, if you go to Australia, it's the next day already. You know, why is there different time zones? Why do some people see day in, in certain parts of the world? Some people see nighttime. Did, are you coming up with these questions right now or did you prepare? Because you're doing very good. These are great questions. <laughs> so so right now, right now, it's um it's 930 in the morning. I'm in Connecticut, right? right? Here. So you can see this? Yeah. 
right? Mm -hmm. I'm in Connecticut. The sun is coming towards me. So as it comes towards me, it's like streetlights are getting higher and higher and higher, right? right. Australia is over here. It's nighttime, right? right? Now you would say, well, if the sun's above us, you'd be able to see it from everywhere. That's not true. How come you can't see a streetlight from a mile away? Because it's close. And then a celestial, we talked about it before, um, object is above the atmos, the atmos, I don't want to say atmosphere, but the atmos, um, and all of that gets compressed and it just goes beyond it. I'm, let me, I'm going to show you one more thing in a second that, that shows you why you can't see the light. So as the time goes, there's 20, there should be 24 time zones, right? So as the sun goes around, it's, uh, you know, in a couple hours, it'll be noon here. So now it's one o'clock, two o'clock, you know, three o'clock, four o'clock for me five o'clock. And now look, it's early morning here. The sun is rising. As the sun comes closer, it's rising up. The sun is set over here. And now I'm going into night. I'm going into night, right? This outer lot yellow line here is December 21st, the Tropic of Capricorn. The inner mm -hmm. one is the Tropic of Cancer. And as the sun travels six months out to the Tropic of Capricorn, it's getting farther and farther away from the inner north. And so when it's farther away, it's lower in the sky. And we get colder. It's simple. It, we get colder and it, it, it's going away. And when it comes back in June, we get warmer and they get colder because it's getting closer to us. Anything in between the tropics is the tropics. The sun is always close. It crosses over them twice a year. Right mm -hmm. here in America, the sun never crosses over us. It comes near and then it goes away. OK, it comes near and then it goes away. But in the tropics, it goes over twice. That's why it's always so hot there, because the sun is heating the earth, and it's never, never far away. Um, and uh, so time zones. Yeah, let's talk about time zones real quick. Uh, time zones is – so on a sphere, right, on a sphere, uh, we should have 24 time zones. It would be like sections of an orange, so the north pole to the south pole. And as the earth spins, we have 24 time zones, right? Right. You with me? Right, that would, that would make sense on a sphere, right? And they say that the sun comes in, it's so far away, the, they're, the, they're coming in bright, uh, coming in straight. The problem is this would be one time zone, but they forget to tell us that they, they, that they forget to factor in that the earth is tilted, right? If the earth is tilted, these time zones make no sense because that one time zone would be in like four different time zones because it's tilted. Here's right. the, here's the problem. And I guarantee you've never heard this. Okay. There's 19 time zones in the North, not 24. There's 24 time zones in the tropics and there's 32 time zones in the South. Yeah. I've never heard this. You've never heard that, but that's a fact. They go, well, it's for political reasons, you know, but it's, it's for nonsense reasons. It's because if you took that disc and wrapped it around a ball, these 32 time zones would get crunched together. And that's how you would say, okay, there's only 24. There's actually 32 because they can't hide it. They can't hide it. Um, go ahead. No, no. I was just wondering, <laughs> like, <laughs> when it comes to like, like, um, you know, the world, the world is round, but if the world was flat, airline flights would take shorter paths on a globe than on a flat map showing that the earth is round. I am so, so glad that you asked that question because that is my favorite question ever. All right. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. Yeah. So we got the we got the world here. The top half is the north. The bottom half is the south. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I want you to think here. You got uh, thousands of airports in the north. So any two airports in the north, I don't care if it's Florida to Italy or anywhere. So starting in a northern airport and ending in any northern airport, would there ever, ever be any reason for that flight to go below the equator? No. Right. And guess what? They never do. Ever. Right? They never, they never do. But on a on and the same should be um the same should be true for the same should be true for the south. Any southern airport going to another southern airport should never go up into the north. Check this out. So this is a, um, a flight from New Zealand to Argentina. It goes from New Zealand mm -hmm. up across the equator to San Francisco, then to Texas, and then it goes all the way back down to Argentina. Why didn't it just fly? From here to here. 
because that's what the globe would say. That's what the great circle route would be. But let's take a look here. Ready? Watch this. Right. Watch careful. This is what it looks like on a flat earth. New Zealand, San Francisco, Houston, Texas, Argentina. It couldn't be any straighter of a line. <laughs> okay. All right. And and there's also a whole bunch of things, emergency landings. We don't have a whole bunch of time to get into it. But um, where a plane will be flying somewhere, there's emergencies. Someone had a heart attack, a baby, um, whatever, and they got to land the plane. And so they land it at an airport that, according to the globe, is like 1,500 miles away. They get there in 10 minutes. Wait a minute. How'd they go 1,500 miles in 10 minutes? When you look at it on a flat Earth, uh, it's right there on that on that, on that that flight path, right? Mm -hmm. It's right there on that exact flight path. So when, when you see that, it, it's it, it's it's ridiculous. I mean, here it, here is you know we're going all the way up and all the way down, but if you look at it, it's pretty much a straight line. They fly over here, get some fuel, continue to flight, continue to flight. There's there's so many examples of this, and uh, you know the and people say, well, they they have hubs and they got to change passengers and pick up pilots. This is the World Cup. They want in Doha, right? They had their own plane. Uh, Buenos Aires team one, they want to go back to Buenos Aires, but they went to Rome for fuel. Wait a minute. Why are they going in the wrong direction to get fuel? Because Doha, Rome, Buenos Aires, it's a straight line again and again and again, air, plane, plane. What's a plane? It's a, a plane. It's a flat surface. Horizon, horizon, horizontal, not curve. zone. sea level. The science of water is flat. Now, all the globe um, anti-flat earthers, they love pointing up at the sky and go, oh, the sun, the, the, the lights in the sky. The lights in the sky are phenomena. We don't know how they work. We admit that we don't know. If you had a box of air and you were in a room that had no air and you opened right. up the box, the air would instantly fill the available space. Helium and hydrogen defy gravity on Earth. You can agree for that. They, they don't, they go up. Yeah. They say our sun and stars are made from 99% helium and hydrogen. My question to you is how much helium and hydrogen do you need before it stops filling the available space and decides to collapse upon itself and make a burning furnace that burns for billions of years and never changes? Okay. The reason you can't figure that out is not because you're stupid. It's because it's stupid. It's a stupid question because it can't happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now it <laughs> You're taking pictures from from the satellites in the space and, and pictures are coming out round like the, the, the planets are round earth is round the yeah. moon is you know what you know how is it flat when when all their technology that they use today everything shows ra a yeah. round planet yeah so round. so this is the the 1972 shot of the earth um, yeah. do, you see, do you see a problem yet right like where how did they get this shot how, how did they how did they get this shot right wait, wait, hold on a second um so here is let me just go back here two three all right so here's here's a shot united states mm -hmm. right florida right okay yeah. so we got a little bit of south america here and the rest of the world is on the other side okay so here's a world map i'll put that picture right there you have to believe that all of this land, everything, is on the other side. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. How can all of that fit on the other side? And then when you say, well, you know, you can make up excuses all you want. But when you, when you actually look at it, there's actually another shot um, of the Earth from, from the other side. And again, everything is missing. Everything is missing. Right? You can't... You can't... Um, yeah, this is the same. This is the same thing. Um, I'll show you one other thing, and then uh, then we got to wrap it up. Um, and th this is what this is. This is going to take like a minute, a minute or two. And I think you'll like. I think you'll like this. So if we look at day and night, right? Um, where is it? Day and night. All right. So this is. So this is from now. If you have a a single source light, the sun, and a ball. There we go. 
if you have a single source light and a ball, you can only light up half of that ball, right? right? But on this date, the Weather Channel says that 70% of the Earth is in light, okay? 70% of the Earth is in light. How is that yeah. possible? So this is uh, this is just a Mercator map, right? Mm -hmm. And it's showing us it's showing us that um, on this day, on uh, August 13th, all of this area is in light at the same time. So we have sunset in California. All of South America is in the light. The only thing in the dark is Australia and these islands over here. At this at this very moment, when the sun is right here over Africa, so. Mm -hmm. Here we have the, the flat earth map and we're gonna put the sun right there where they had it. And then we're gonna lift the sun up and we're gonna create a circle of light, all right? And now this isn't exactly how the optics of the sky work, but we can circle it. Look, we got California just at the edge, South America's in light. The only thing in the dark is over here. Okay, very cool. So that, so we can kind of create the same real world observations, right? Yeah. So now we have a globe Tilted, as they say, it's tilted. We have our single source light. Now watch carefully over here. Australia's pink, right? You'll see Australia. There's Australia. And we're going to put it right into the dark right there, just like they had it. And then we're going to go to the other side. We're going to go to the other side. And there's a problem. All of South America is in the dark. All of America is in the dark. So let's spin that out. We'll put California right on the edge of the darkness. So just like we saw it. Um, on what day and night tell us. So when the sun is just right there, yeah. South America's in the light, we're good there. We walk around and then all of Europe, Russia is in the dark. I'm gonna show right. you, I'm gonna spin out all of this, all of this land right here should be in the light. All of that should be in the light, but it's not. And when we look at it compared to what we show here, this actually matches and you can't reproduce it on a globe. You can't. And then, you know, when, when you start looking at, um, you know, the earth from space pictures, it, they're all CGI nonsense. You know, right. the, the, the pictures from uh, satellites um, are, are just pictures. They're just paintings. They're just CGI. Um, this, these are all official pictures from NASA. Which one do you live on? Because at least eight of them have to be fake because they're not the same. Right. Right. At least eight of them have to be fake. What about if not all light? You know, in that? different light sources, things could appear different too. Say that again. Different. Well, which one is, I mean, the, the continents are different. The colors are different. The, the, none of it, none of it works. None of it works. Right. And then if you actually look, though, this is a picture from NASA, right? So we can actually measure across Mexico and Baja and say, okay, that's 934 miles. We could actually verify that because it's here on the ground, right? right? So 934 miles, they tell us the diameter of the earth is 7,918. So I should be able to fit eight and a half of these lines in between or going across the earth. Eight and a half of them doesn't even fit on this whole page, right? Mm -hmm. So something's wrong. Mm -hmm. This right here tells you that this picture is fake. If this picture is fake, why is NASA faking a picture of the Earth? Because there are no photos of Earth. There are no photos of Earth, right? Where, where is it, right? This is, I showed you this before, right? All of this land has to be on the other side. All of that land has to be on the other side. And now let's look at the other side. Okay, we got a picture of the other side from NASA. Here's Africa. So this here, all of this has to be on the other side that we just looked at. And before right. we only saw this little section right here not even Canada, just here, right? So again, another fake picture, another fake picture. Again, the brainwashing is really strong. Don't believe anything I say, go verify everything, flatearthdave.com and go watch the crash course. You can get my app, I, I, the app is a $3 app. There's a, um, there's a, if you wanna be on the social media part of it, there's $11 a year, but you don't have to do that. Right. That's just, uh, you know, but you don't have to get the app. Go to my website, scroll down to see a big picture of me. And it says crash course. I challenge you watch three of those videos and then send me. You won't even send me a globe proof because you'll know the earth is not a globe. But if you refuse to watch it, ask yourself, why are you refusing to look? Why are you refusing to look? Because you don't want your ball taken away. That's why. Right. Nobody likes having their ball taken away. <laughs> you know, the, try taking a try, try taking a ball away from a baby, right? What happens when you take a ball away from a baby? They right? cry. 
<laughs> they cry. Well, guess what? These are just big babies that don't want their ball taken away. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what's the, the big deal about whether you think it's because there's so many skeptics out there and we've been taught since day one to to, to think about that every, the, the, the earth is round. What is that, what it doesn't matter if you think the earth is flat versus round. Now, you're saying that it can make a huge impact on your mental health. It can change the mental health, can change your physical health. You can change, get you out of depression. It can make you think differently. It can help you with addiction, you know. What if it, if there was ten things you really want to emphasize about the importance of really looking at this and taking the, seriously that the world is flat? What would you like to say to the listeners why they really should consider this this theory and why they should start opening their minds up to the possibilities that the world is flat? Right. So the the question is, um, you know, what what is flat Earth? Why 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 would they lie? Right. And there, I'll give you the, I'll give you three short reasons. Okay. What, what has flat earth done for me? Right. One, I'm more at peace. I'm not afraid of asteroids hitting the earth. I'm not afraid of nuclear bombs. I, I don't think I, there's more to discover. We're not running out of fuel. We're not overpopulated. The population thing is a hoax. Anyway, there's less than 3 billion people. If you look into it, um, all of the stuff that they keep us in fear with are gone. So I'm more at peace. That's enough right there. Right. Greater sense of freedom. And guess what? We're not in a prison. There's more land beyond Antarctica. I believe that there's tons more land. I think that the, we're we're only being shown a tiny little circle of where we live. And it, and the Antarctic Treaty stops anyone from independently exploring beyond 60 degrees south. I think that there's more out there. Um, check out my social media, um, my YouTube. <laughs> excuse me. Um, it's all can be found at flatearthday.com. I have information on lots of information on that. And then a closer connection to the creator. I had no connection to the creator. So now I have this connection. I know that we're free. I know that we actually do matter. And I know that I don't have to be governed by anybody. You know, the government wants to get above you and above God. Nobody's above me. And if the government's lucky, maybe I'll let them go below my feet. But um, I actually don't even want them there. So they want to take over. They want you. Here's the good news. They can't take away your freedom unless you willingly give it to them, right? A mandate is only a mandate, but you can say, no, I don't agree with that mandate, right? right. And, and so, you know, they they can't take away your freedom. Any last wow. questions? Because I do have to run. I got another another interview coming up. No, I'll let you go. I, you know, you've really made some really good points. Maybe we can have you back on the show and we can talk a little more in depth about this. But, you know, um, where can people find you again? FlatEarthDave.com. Um, again, don't believe anything I say. Uh, don't believe anything anyone says. You have to, <laughs> excuse me, you have to go verify this stuff yourself. And that's what I did. And the more you look, the more you'll understand. And the more, the closer you're getting to the target, the more people are going to come at you and go, you're crazy. You know, why would they lie? How could they keep it a secret? You know, they can't even keep, uh, you know, BJ in the White House a secret. Sorry. Um, they can't, they, you know, this is all to control your mind, right? They're literally destroying our world and we're allowing it. Um, and this is the foundation of the lies. So again, take some time, turn off Netflix and start watching these videos, the crash course videos. Check out my, my I have a, a YouTube channel, D-I-T-R-A, stands for Deep Inside of the Rabbit Hole. Link to flatearthdave.com. Um, and they're all three minute videos, four minute videos. So you don't have to commit, right? To start a little bit. On my app every day, there's a featured video that my challenge is watch the featured video every day for two weeks. At the end of that, you have one globe proof, uh, send it to me. But before you do, you got to hit the question mark button Oops. And uh, the question mark button will bring up the frequently asked questions and make sure it's not answered there. You know, why, uh, why does the, where does the sun go? Why the lie? This is the greatest section of all. These videos in here are all being hidden from you. Um, Google will not fit them to you. What about gravity? We didn't get into that. What about seasons, right? All of that. If you watch this stuff, then you'll know we've done the work for you. We've made it easy. So mm -hmm. there you go. All righty. Well, I want to hear from the listeners. I, I hope the listeners will put some comments in the comment boxes and, you know, share. Do you believe what Dave has to say or do you think it's a hoax? Do you, you know, well, I want to hear what people have to say. Belief is the enemy of knowing. That's a quote from Crow 777 Radio, another great show to educate you. Um, 
and the um, don't believe anything. Here's the thing: send Stacy some questions, and you compile a whole bunch of questions. I'll come back on, and we'll answer all those questions. But don't tell me the questions in advance, okay? Okay, that sounds like a plan. I love all it. Right. I love well, this has right. been great. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I appreciate your time. And this has definitely been a very interesting podcast. And I really, you, you put a lot of thoughts in people's heads and really made their uh, wheels start to spin because I'm sure they're starting to wonder, is the world really flat? Is it round? Can it be? Is it possible? So we'll see. We'll see. But I look forward to talking to you in the future. And, and thank you so much for coming on the show. All right. Thanks, Stacey. See ya. See ya. Oh.